Um, there was some. There was something about Sid that I was. I was. I was sitting out on my front step last night with my glass of wine, thinking about this interview and thinking. I mean, I mean, because I've never really. Th it's very difficult to know what I really like about. I mean, I know I, I adore Sid and his, his music, but it's difficult to put it into words. And all I can really think of is that sort of pipe at the gates of dawn, unlike any other musician at the time who was. I guess from an R&B tradition, like they all were, like the Stones and Peter Towns and everyone. He, he almost, uh, he was a bridge really, Sid, to, from R&B, mixing, mixing R&B and getting slightly weird, maybe with some American influences and stuff, and, and then into um, sort of, I don't know, the psychedelic music that we, um, Whereas people like Peter Townsend, who I really like too, but he, he kind of bridged it towards rock in great big capital letters. Um, so it's, it's kind of a different, different thing. He, he was completely unique in that way. Yeah, well, he was a very weak and fragile bridge there, unfortunately. <laughs> I mean, what, how I identify with him, absolutely. <laughs> Is that he, he's not this confident pop star and he's not uh, full of himself, he's not an egocentric maniac. He's uh, purely uh, a musician and a songwriter. I mean, he's hardly even a singer, and that's possibly another reason why I really like him, because I, I, the fragility in his voice is something I really appreciate. I've never really particularly liked confident voices. Um, possibly because mine isn't either, and it, and it gives me strength to actually... <coughs> I mean, the, the Barrett solo albums, I would never have done any solo albums myself if it wasn't for those, definitely. So you thought if Sid can do it, so can I? I thought, well, if he had a go, you know, then I, I what's wrong with me doing it? Just bits of it, snatches is great. This is a story about a girl I knew. She didn't write this song and that made me feel blue. She said a big band or something. <laughs> she don't rock the ball. She don't like it. She don't do the strong. Well, she don't do it right.
people held it together. A lot of people didn't really in, in the 60s. And I think it was an awful lot to do with uh, the, 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 just the, what was happening culturally. It's almost the same as what's happening now with, with um, music that I'm not really involved with, but um, the kind of dance thing. There's an awful lot of casualties from that. And, um, but it is a real cultural pressure. I mean, I, I could imagine it was pretty strong in the 60s around here and everything. Um, to kind of experience what everyone else was experiencing, otherwise you feel left out and feel like, uh, especially if you're creative, that uh, you possibly weren't f fulfilling your proper potential unless you uh, experimented with psychedelics and uh, really tried to get free and, expre and, and express everything, really. I was wondering also about whether you had experienced this too, maybe the sort of pressures of once you start to get known, you know, the pressures to produce hit records and to go on touring. I mean, with Sid, it was Arnold Lane and C. Emily Play, and then there was real pressure on to produce the next one and, you know, get out on the road. And I could see all that for somebody like him is, you know, it's like, it's almost like completely the opposite to what the way he should have lived his life, in a way. Yeah, yeah. I think it was like, uh that pressure is too much for anybody, really. I think I think it's nothing. I, I don't think it's anything you can ever foresee. I, I think uh, it's good fun playing, and you get signed and whatever. But you have no idea what kind of, what what you're getting yourself into, really. Um, so you have to like. I mean, you either drop out of it. You, you sort of never want it in the first place. You sort of. But, you know, it's, diff it's difficult. I mean, you kind of always want it since you're young, and then when you get it, you kind of, it's, it's completely different to how you imagine. It's not just uh, hanging out in cool places and wearing cool clothes. It's kind of a, it's an awful lot of work to the, to the, to the point where you just uh, hate the music you're playing almost, you know. Yeah, you said refused to play see Emily play. The third time he went on top of the box, he just refused to play it. Yeah. And, you know, and he wouldn't play it on gigs at all. No. It's just that sort yeah. of, ex the expectation that you're going to churn out your hit. When you, I mean, he's still trying to develop as a musician. And exactly, he was still developing. and. Um that, that's the that's the main problem with record labels. Is that they force these not properly formed, creative, quite fragile people around the world. They they, they get into all sorts of uh, stuff, and uh, and it's very difficult to to get through it unless you have an awful lot of uh, discipline with yourself.
come around to make you sin so long. Thank you.